<laughs> All right. So uh, are you ready for this? I'm ready. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So uh, obviously I've seen the movie this morning and uh, I would like to start with uh, Eli and Derek actually, because um, Eli actually believes that he's not good enough at what he does. And it's actually Derek who goes like, you are better than you, than you think you are. And I was wondering, you know, when it comes down to real life, uh, did you ever actually have to stop yourself from underestimating your skills and what you can actually do? Oh, gosh. Yeah, I tend to still do that all the time. Um, <laughs> I, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I've also had situations with um, with Tyler Hecklin in, in real life, kind of, you know, us trying to amp each other up for things. Um, but yeah, I definitely it's something I have to constantly try to work on is um, just believing that I'm on the right path. And, you know, if normally if I set out to do something, I, I like to even if I fail. I like to see it out, um, right. most things. Um, and, you know, so that's really the mindset I have, as long as I just, um, you know, go with, I guess just, it sounds cliche, but kind of, you know, go with your gut and just trust, kind of trust your instincts, so. Absolutely, no, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, if you fail, then then that's a, you know, that's a learned lesson, I guess, so. Absolutely. I mean, there can be, you know, you cannot learn without failure. I mean, how how do you want to grow, you know, otherwise? That's life. God. That's uh, yeah, 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 it is. <laughs> so I, I like, I like um, a dialogue by Melissa who goes like, um, so uh, every time someone says something's impossible, somehow the impossible seems to happen. Um, and I was wondering if you do remember, you know, something specific from your own life where you were like, you know, at first, it kind of seemed impossible, but then you were actually able to make it possible. Yeah, I mean, that's one of my favorite lines from the movie, by the way. Every time um, right. every time Melissa's on, on screen, it's just like, she's incredible. Oh, yeah. um, and I'd have that same reaction, too, if Allison, you know, came back how 15 years later. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, <clears throat> yeah, I think that, you know, getting to do what I do now is, you know, be working in in the industry and um i mean I'm, I'm a i'm a kid from like small town kansas i we didn't have a paved road in our town we had one paved road um and then eventually i hear they just got a gas station where i grew up so you know i kind of came from a very very um very 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 humble beginnings and then you know now i kind of started you know had this idea when i was a teenager to chase this big dream of yeah. you know being to LA and trying to be on TV, which sounds absurd. Uh, and, you know, so I think that that's, that's kind of my biggest um, kind of moment of um, realization that, you know, I actually went and tried to seek out uh, a, a dream and that it's starting to come true. I mean, I think it, the dream changes, you know, it's definitely not the same dream it was when I was a teenager. Uh, you know, sets in and, you know, different goals and different things come up. But now, you know, now I, I know that I'm capable of, of accomplishing, um, at least getting close to accomplishing whatever I set my mind to. So I just have to be confident in that. Right. Uh, you know, but, but I mean, there are like so many lines in the movie that actually, you know, were like, oh, you know, that are kind of deep and that make you oh. make you think in a way, you know, that, that, that but that's what I love about it, you know, and one yeah. line is also, uh, by Derek, you know, who tells his son to always remember who he is. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, so many people actually forget who they are, you know, and, you know, the, you know, it's terrible when they don't even recognize that, you know, because there are people who don't recognize it. And I was wondering, how do you make sure in your life you always remember who you are and that you never forget about, you know, what, what it is that makes you, you? You know, that is also something I'm, I, it's something I kind of struggle with a lot of the time is I, I, I don't know. I think you have to really build a really um, strong foundation around your sense of self. And so for me, I feel like, especially coming into this industry, I had to be so many different things that I wasn't in order to merely uh, uh, survive in this industry. And then, you know, once I started coming into my own and, and realizing that making building all these walls and being people that I am not was starting to really affect my health I I made that change um but um yeah I mean so I think that what was the initial question because I was on the way towards it 
and then I, my cat is screaming in the background. Oh, you cat. I love it. I don't see it, but I love it. <laughs> you can't hear it? Okay. The initial question, you know what? I, I lost track as well. <laughs> I, I was almost, was almost there. I was this close was to being there. there. Uh, it was like I not not that. not forgetting who you are, basically. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's basically, you know, just <clears throat> I think that especially if you have great friends and, and, and family and just people who support you. And I've been lucky enough to have people who have followed my career for I've been doing this for over 15 years. Wow. Uh, so and so, you know, to have that support has really meant the world to me. Um and I just have to, I just have to be a little less hard on myself, I think. And that's something that I, that I struggle with, but you know, it, that's, that's life. So. Oh yeah. That, that's the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, there's like a fun situation with Parrish and uh, Malia, you know, uh, it's so fun. Because saw that, like, that, that was out of nowhere. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I, I, I love her character so much because she's like, um i'm not here to support your ego and it, whatever it is you have to do you have to do it yourself and this is so fun because very often you know you 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 meet people and you 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 see that they want you to go like you can do it you can do it you know like this motivation speech is that malia simply refuses and I was yeah, like i'm not here for this pity party <laughs> yeah, um, right yeah. and i was wondering like if you know um if you ever actually had to tell yourself you know what what I have to do this, you know, myself on my own without having, you know, people uh, giving you like the first push. Oh, that's that's how I am. All like pretty much on with everything. I I tend to. I know sometimes I won't even tell people if I have if I'm working on certain things, like especially people even close to me, because if I tell someone like I started going to school. Um, I, I went back to school uh, and started taking classes for writing. Yeah. And I initially didn't tell a lot of people because I didn't think, I thought that if I told someone that I wouldn't finish it. And so I, I do tend to keep things, you know, I tend to want to be the first person to actually get in the groove of things and actually uh, start things because if someone else is involved, I start listening to the wrong voices and, you know, instead of listening to, to myself, which, you know, a lot of time you have to really trust what you're doing. So, um, oh, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, it is nice to have that support. Um, mm. I have, I've been working on my stubbornness recently. Um, and so that's been fun. Uh, and, you know, I think that it is nice to have other people who are, are you know, helping you out along the way, instead of trying to feel like you're, the only person on an island so absolutely absolutely and as you mentioned you know earlier it's so cool that allison is back obviously the fans were all like oh my goodness you know when they found out that she's back for the trailers i and, cried yeah and it is cool because because it kind of picks up you know uh from episodes that for me were amongst like the best i believe it was like the third season i believe it was yeah, yeah. yeah i mean so very long time ago actually but um i love it and and obviously um she has missed a lot of time and she even says herself that she's even trying to figure out how to get you know that time back in a way um and it's wondering because obviously we all make use of our time in a very different way and we all have a different concept of time and I was wondering if you ever actually felt that you were not exactly making use of the time you have you know like the way you should have looking back yeah. Yeah. Every day. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I am a, I guess you could call me a hobby enthusiast. I, I have about 5,000 hobbies. I, and I, I will do the hobby until I either not quite master it, but get good at it. And then I'll quit and I'll start another hobby. So, um, yeah, yeah currently I'm, um, in my DIY phase. I've been in that for a couple of years just, you know, knocking holes in walls and being like, I'm going to, I'm going to renovate the house. And then realizing that there's been that hole in the wall for a year. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely, um, yeah. <clears throat> but you know what, I feel like having 5,000 hobbies is definitely better than having no hobby, hobby at all, because there are people who really don't know what to do with their time. And for those people, I think, you know, I, I and that's something for me, I just, especially during the pandemic. 
Mm. I, we obviously had a lot of time on our hands and we were all staying at home. And that really was it for me. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try things I've never done. And then I started, I started painting. I started making different things at like ceramics and pottery. And so for people who don't know what they want to do, I mean, you really just have to try everything. That's something that I, and a lot of time it's like, for me, if it's not fun, I don't want to do it. I'm not trying to, you know, you know, play a game that I don't want to play or things like that. But I think that yeah. once I step out of my comfort zone, <clears throat> now I have so many hobbies and there's no time to do all of them. Wow. And then also, you know, work and things like that. So, um, yeah, I have too many hobbies, not enough time. That's why I don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Right, because you know, every hour you sleep is like a wasted hour. You could have done something else, right? In a way, it's boring. Like I, it's just boring. I don't want to sleep. Oh my <laughs> goodness! You know what? You're actually the first person to say that, and I, I feel the same way. You know, if I could be awake 24 hours a day, I will do it. You know, I'd be the first person to try out something that keeps me awake all the time, just in, so I can make use of all the time the way I want. You know, oh, yeah. And my sleep schedule, I don't like daytime, like. Like w- during the day, I'm just like, I just need everyone to go away. I, there's all these, it's loud, even though I live literally by no one. Um, <laughs> I don't like daytime, but when the night nighttime happens, it's like, I feel like birds singing in my ears and like this beautiful melody. It's just like, I am not a day person. I'm a night person. I stay up until, I mean, I stay up until the morning. So yeah. <laughs> so cool so cool uh, and I mean um, you know another line from the film that really got me like emotionally is like when Scott says you know like I don't worry about the past because now I have a future um, and I was wondering if this is something you you thought as well you know after having faced your past while writing your book you know and through all these years and 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 actually releasing it then <clears throat> yeah I I tend to be someone who um, I always say, or friends always tell me that I, I tend to hold them hostage with my memories. Um, and mm-hmm. it's something that I love doing. I am addicted to the past and, you know, my mm-hmm. therapist likes to say it's cause I, I, I have a hard time living in the now because I, can you hear that? Yes. Yeah, so sweet. I love it. He's not sweet at all. He's such a- <laughs> oh, come on. He sounded very sweet. I'm such a brat he's down there you can't see him but no anyway um he, it's like he hears me talking about my book and he's like can we he's like can we wrap it up you've been talking about your book for like two years um <clears throat> i name i even thanked you in my book you brat um <laughs> uh yeah but i th- so i think that you know living in the past for me i still love it i know that you know some people are like i don't know some people for some reason get a little irritated whenever with nostalgia and stuff like that. And I don't, I love it. I, um, but I just, I really cherish my memories, you know, and I really cherish, um, I, I, I have a photographic memory. And so I remember details that a lot of people don't really remember. And I think the one thing I really love doing is like, you know, (laughs) I am so sorry, Timmy. No problem. No. Um, uh, if I put him in the room, it'll be worse. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I think that you know, getting having um, the knowledge of my past and things like that has really helped me, Timmy. Please stop. Has really helped me kind of shape my future because it, I now know what what roads not to go down, and you know what um, you know what to do to actually, I don't know, get to the to the end of the the road safely. I guess. So, and do you also find it, you know, annoying when you remember something really great and then you're like, oh, do you remember, remember this? And then your friends are like, nope. But no, that's the thing is none of my friends remember anything. It's like, <laughs> I, I, oh, remember, no. I remember vivid details. Like I save, I have every single ticket stub. I have every receipt, every letter anyone's ever given me, every single, wow. every single card, my favorite gifts are just cards if someone writes me a card I keep it and so um yeah I just I I'm like a memory hoarder um so yeah I just I love I love all that stuff but it actually shows in your book because your book is very detailed and you know all the memories you bring up from from at the very young age you know it's kind of quite remarkable what you remember you know so it's a lot yeah some of it I wish I, I wouldn't 
I, I didn't, mm -hmm. I wasn't able to remember very much, but the, the thing is, is, you know, having such a vivid memory about a lot of things that went on. Um, yeah, it kind of just made me the person I am today, which, you know, I'm still trying to figure out who I am, but at the same time, I, I have a, I, I'm standing a lot more firm and, um, in my own, you know, in my, in my own self, you know, I find finally started to figure out who I am and, um, and embrace, you know, embrace the gentler sides and embrace, <clears throat> embrace sides of me that, you know, people, people don't even know that I have and things like that. And, you know, I'm starting to really dig deep. So. Right. And, you know, your cat won't like it, but I also actually have a, a copy of your book here. Uh, <laughs> and I actually, I have, I'm so sorry that I am not fully from like at, at page 144 because I actually got it just yesterday evening. So I, it was a very that's, that's far. That's a, that's a long way in. Yeah. 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 Totally. And uh, you know, but I will probably be done if I wouldn't, you know, like make notes and whatever. But it, that's so all I do. I kind of yeah. decorated it. But <laughs> that's literally all I do with all my books is literally I annotate everything. <laughs> so <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no but i was wondering because you 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 write that you know um that you ask had i ever been more myself and will i ever be again and so that 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 sentence will i ever be again i was wondering if that is is one that that crossed your mind when you were actually asked to go back to the closet yeah that was you know that from day one that that really affected me you know, it wasn't something that I was like, you know what, I'm game, like, I'm ready to do this. Yeah. I was, you know, I moved to LA with my high school boyfriend, who, who we went to prom together. Um, we drove out to LA with, you know, just us two. And so, you know, having to go to these acting classes and being told to, you know, butch it up and, you know, being told to uh, put uh, post-it notes under my tongue to fix my lisp to go to movement for the actor classes to fix the way I walked. Um, it, it really, right when I moved to LA, it started, it just felt like, how do I explain this? It, it felt like, um, you know, the immediate excavation of mm -hmm. my soul and everything that made me me. And so now, you know, um, now I've just been spending a lot of the years trying to find all of those pieces that were, um, I wouldn't say taken from me because, you know, I did know I went into this on my own choice. Um, but at the same time, you know, a lot of that feels stolen from me. So I'm, I'm, you know, just trying to regain a lot of that, that, that real estate, you know what I mean? So. But then I love it so much that you've made the decision, like, you know, to, to, to come out in public and to be yourself because a lot of people, are unable to make that decision for various reasons, of course. And I was wondering, because even after having made such a huge decision, we, I mean, it's life. We will always meet people that are going to try to have, you know, an influence on us or are, who are going to try to, to control us and our decisions and whatever. And I was wondering, you know, whenever you have all these different voices, how do you make sure that uh, the only one you are really listening to is, is your own? <sighs> I think that definitely takes practice. I am really good at it now. I, you know, it's definitely boundaries, which is, is very hard to establish, especially what, once, you know, once you become a rug to people and once you become a yes person, the second you stick up for yourself and the second you, you, yeah, the second you stand up for yourself, you're immediately, um, you know, the rudest person that ever met, the biggest asshole ever. And that's the, that's the thing that's so hard is a lot of the time it feels like once you're, if you're nice once, you have to be nice and you have to play the game forever. Um, mm -hmm. But you don't have to do that. Um, you know, and I think that standing up for myself now and, and making sure I prioritize my time, I, if I get through the day, I'm, I don't tend to get stressed out at all anymore because I don't put myself in situations where I can get stressed out because I know, I know myself. Um, if I don't want to go to that dinner, I won't go to the dinner. If I don't want to do something, I just won't do it, which that's irritating for people. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's what's best for my mental health, you know, and, and also I, 
yeah, I just, then I can be at home with my cat who's yelling at me all the time. And that's my, <laughs> that's my safe space. And then I can just be annotating and reading, you know? Yeah. So yeah, definitely you have to just um, hold your ground and actually just, um, yeah, just no is a complete sentence. I know that's very, very cliche, but it's true. But I know I feel like it's so important, really, I, I to say no when you don't want to do something because, you know, you, you're you like, oh, I don't want to offend them. It, it's something that I had to learn, you know, as well, because you, you, you're like, oh, I can never and not say no because then they're offended and stuff. And I'm, all, I'm like, but they say no to me all the time as well. So why am I not supposed to be to, to say no to if I don't want and they to? They won't even think they, they're not even there's not even an afterthought after they do it. But <laughs> yeah. we, we are now then spiraling going for the for days being like. I hope I didn't upset that person. I hope I didn't do this. And it's oh like, my gosh, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, I'm still working on that, but I'm a lot better at it now. Now I am very, my face tends to be almost like a, um, I mean, you know exactly what I'm thinking because I can't hide my emotion on my face anymore. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, if I'm happy, mad, sad, and um, yeah, so it's very, I'm very um, direct in that way, so. And, you know, sometimes I wonder if Hollywood has really changed when it comes down to LGBT uh, support, because, you know, like for consumers, it looks like it, you know, they go like, oh, look, there's representation there, there's diversity there. But behind the scenes is a, is a whole different story. And I know from from the media world that, you know, people of, of higher positions whisper what they had said before, you know, so it almost feels like that it's them now who were sent, you know, back to the closet because they are kind of faking support in order to avoid like a shit storm that's at least what i feel like in the media world and i was wondering if you feel similar about hollywood you know that not every support is genuine support you know it's so tricky i mean it's definitely kind of you know i i definitely don't want to make an umbrella statement um but sure. i think that i think it's that it's the question you know it's it's just the simple question that, you know, that people in the media, every time they talk to someone who is out in the industry, they ask, you know, about, um, it's almost like a formulaic question, I think. And I think that that's where it can kind of start is um, figuring out a way to try to implement this change instead of just, mm -hmm. uh, I found a lot, especially when I was promoting the book, um, a lot of times, a lot of people didn't actually even read your, I mean, you got to page 144. That's fucking amazing. And thank you. A lot of times people didn't read, a lot of times people didn't read even the blurb, even the, the, you know, one line and oh every single piece of the press for my book was about two lines that I wrote in the book, one about a TV show that I, that I left and another one about the other TV show I left mm. That has nothing to do with my book. My book is about my soul, my my mom and all of these incredibly deep personal stories that have nothing to do with my career. So and they so, were like making that the main thing? Like yeah, every like, headline was, oh wow. Colton left this and, and it it ruined the rollout of my book uh, and it really yeah. pissed me off. Um, and so, but I think it's the questions, I think it's the, there has to be a new way, I think, to talk to, um, cause you can really ask anyone who's out in the industry, you know, you can, I, every friend I have who's out in the industry has at least 10 of the same headline that we all share the same headline. It's, oh, wow. Yeah. It's how, what, like, you know, what needs to change about um, LGBTQ plus representation um, mm -hmm. in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, I understand that it is very good intentions, but I do think it then it just gets lost kind of in the void. And I think that, you know, then it's like, how do we direct those questions to the people who are actually in the, in the positions and in power to actually, you know, make that change. And so, so we're not kind of just talking in circles. Um, yeah. But I don't, I, maybe I answered the question. I'm not sure, but. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, there's actually something in the book that really reminded me of a friend of mine, actually, you know, it's actually the moment when uh, your dad passed away and, the reaction you had to it wasn't the reaction that your family had expected. And that was actually, you know, something that happened to my friend as well at a very similar age. Um, and, you know, his family actually was mad at him because of that. And what it actually did to him is that later on, 
he faked reactions. And I was wondering if that was actually ever an issue for you or if you, or if you were able to keep your reactions, uh, you know, organic. You know, I, I, yeah, in the book, I, I kind of, there's context around it. So, it, you know, but it might sound a little harsh coming, you know, out of context, but I basically describe it as um, feeling like he was nothing, um, nothing but a goldfish, you know? And so that, that feeling for me, I think I had a lot of that feeling because I didn't have a very good relationship with him. And I had, you know, we had a very rocky relationship. And it, whereas my brother, who was a year older than me and him, had the best relationship ever. And I felt like I was that kid standing outside, you know, standing outside, looking through the window, just watching all these amazing memories happen with my brother. And then every time I would walk in the door, I felt like he just had his hand, like, you know, I was reaching for him and I could never actually grab him. And so I think those, those memories for me, I couldn't fake them. You know, I bawled my eyes out at his funeral. It was so emotional and he was in the military. So they had the, the gun salute and everything. And um, I explained in the book that I, I left my, I, I left my tears there like, um, like flowers on his unmarked grave. Um, and yeah, so I think especially as um, I think a lot of queer people can relate to some t a lot. Well, I would say a lot of people I know, I won't speak for everyone as a whole, but a lot of people I know have very tricky relationships with their um, with their fathers because of the masculinity issue. Right. Um, and I was an overly effeminate kid and I, you know, I didn't have a very good relationship with my dad. And I think that was a lot of the reason why. But so my reaction to his passing was something I, I couldn't fake. And it did piss my family off. But at the same time, I had to protect myself, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Seriously, Cold, and I want to thank you so much for, for your time and obviously for for being so open-minded for sharing your stories and everything. And, you know, and speaking of reactions, actually, I just got into a part that totally reminded me of myself. And it's actually a little, a little side story where you say that you are, you know, kind of struggling with reacting whenever you receive a gift or at then, you know, that, that you know, because uh, that's that's so me, you know. Sometimes I go to, to other friends and I was like, was the reaction okay, you know? And then... <laughs> Oh yeah, that's why I don't like gifts. If someone gives me a card, I I won't open it in front of them. I'll read it after. Um, <laughs> but I don't, I don't. Even if I love something, I just, I don't know. I I want to I want to give it a genuine reaction, but sometimes I just can't. Yeah. And so that's why I don't like gifts. That's why I don't like birthdays or things like that because I, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I feel like I'm. I have wall, I have like cement walls uh, built up around things like that. But yeah. When we see us at real junket, you know, you give me something, I give you something and we'll see how we react to each other. <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll text each other whenever we open it later. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Seriously, Colton, thank you so much. It was a total pleasure talking to you and your cat. And uh, hopefully uh, again, very soon. I know. I hope so. And thank you for taking the time. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reading the book. Appreciate it.